Hello everyone, my name is Raging Raptor and I welcome you to a new World of Tanks video. Today's video is a little bit weird to me because I couldn't really set on what I should call it. 357 matchmaking is bad and this is why. My hated map. Unlikely hero. There were a lot of ideas I could have used for this video. So yeah, I might just take one. Not entirely sure yet, but today we are going to see a game where I in the AMX M454 is going to, well, carry the game basically. I also have a platoon buddy which is also a highly skilled player. So now I try to also recreate what we were talking during the game so you can understand what is going through our heads when we are two very, very good players. So now let's just jump straight in. Xylance, my friend, is playing the T T95E6 and I am playing in the AMX M454. And yes, I am playing this tank with the, well, with the not optimal solution, the Bigus Dicus Gunus. Yeah, usually you should play this tank with the 120mm gun and I just really, really enjoy the huge Alpha Strike of 560. It's a lot of fun to use and it can be very, very rewarding. Here you can already see my first little mistake. I, I was caught off guard by the Batchatillion and this is why now I am not able to shoot at the Standard B. So, first tip for the map airfield. Actually a map I very, very much dislike. Again, it's very, very campy, you will see it in this game. But this was the first mistake. You always want to go as quick as possible into this position right here. Why exactly though? When you are a medium fast heavy, you, as you could see, we still almost had the opportunity to hit the standard B into the side. And especially with this peek-a-boom gun, with this 560 alpha gun, you really do want to do those alpha strikes when it comes to the side of the tank. Now, you might ask yourself, but Raging, you also had a video where you said, hey, <laughs> when you're top tier, play aggressive. Why are you not playing aggressive? It's very, very simple. This map doesn't really allow playing aggressive. You can, for example, you with the budget down here. That's totally working. But for example, I can't go from down here. By the way, perfect shot into the lower plate of the 113. We even pulled his rep kit, which is very, very worth it for us. Now we do have to stay low and stay frosty because, well, suddenly an 140 is coming around. This is also something during the replay we have done or during the live gameplay where we were talking to each other like, oh, there is a 140 coming, prepare for him. I also did a mis mistake with the 140. I didn't wait for him to repair his trucks. If we would have done it, I could have gotten more spot damage, which would have been stonks for the gun mark, but well, you can also see I'm very, 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 very careful. Silence already did receive some artillery shots, so I know that the enemy artillery is somewhere down here. I also do not want to drive around right here, because let's look at the minimap. Lorraine 40T, <coughs> depending a Lynx maybe in there, or an M46 pattern. If I drive too far forward, I will get 100% striked into my side. Also, yeah, AMX M4, frontal armor is not actually that strong. The lower plate is actually very, very weak, so are the cupolas. So this tank excels at playing hold down. It's a little bit in the sense of an E5 even. But um, yeah, pushing in is a little bit hard. I also also very lucky to not get shot at from over here. Air and this is also why you hardly push around here, because there's always somebody camping back there. Or at least, usually. And I can't drive around here, down here, because, well, people are usually camping behind here. Again, this is why I'm personally not the biggest fan of this map. Because it simply is always so... Well, you have to camp so much. But yeah, we are quite far behind. Not in HP, but in kills, 3 to 7. And I am constantly looking left and right, left and right, what can I do? And now I decided to turn around, Xylance again, again said, hey, there's an E75 coming for you, try to go for him. Here I did a very perfect detracking shot on, on him with damage. And now I was like, you know what, I have to get some kills in. I decided to push forward, I can still stay hold down roughly here. And because we have a 130mm gun, we can quite simply just overmatch him. So that was very good for us and we could easily finish off a threatening tier 9 heavy tank. Now here I was like, you know what, I don't even 
give a damn. I'm just going to get this M41 because look at our back. There is another guy coming. It's the 113. And now I have to sprint back because Silent said he is getting, well, he's getting rushed. There's a standard B coming. There's a 113 coming. I try to turn as quickly as possible around. But Silence, he can't really run away. This is, again, the issue when people are driving like this. They, they simply can get yoloed like this. I was like, okay, there's a standard B. I don't care. I'm just going to get the kill on this guy. Even though I potentially take a second shot, which I did. It is just so much more important in such a situation to get kills in. Again, we still have a lot of HP and we could be way back in HP. I don't really know why he did this peak. Lucky for him that I didn't detract him and damage this Amorak. I'm not sure if I could potentially one kill him or one shot him because of the huge caliber. But now we are in a decent-ish comfortable position where we are standing. At the moment, I'm just trying to do as much as possible. I don't think about victory. I don't think about defeat. I'm just trying to do as much as possible. I know I got spotted and I'm pretty certain I know why because of the Stritzwagen S1. So I decide, you know what? I don't give a damn. You are you can camp in your position. That's all Gucci. I still have potentially a Jack Tiger in my backup. So I decide to drive around and see what I can spot, which I do and 668. Again, this gun is pure fun. It's not competitive or anything. It's not like the 120 mm gun, but it's something unique and this is why I very much enjoy it. However, I still think the tier 9 one is a lot more fun tier for tier but the tier 10 one can definitely also be fun. So now I know where the 268 is. I basically know where everybody is. I know where the artillery piece is and look at that. There is a Stritzwagen S1. And I'm just going to say thank you very much for the free damage and I'm just going to take you like this, my dear friend. So I still can't really push in. Why exactly? Come on guys. We know there is still somewhere a normal Progetto. We know there's somewhere the Stritzwagen and Luckily enough, we were able to finish off the Stritzwagen, but there is still a stand standard B or standard B somewhere, and it's just so annoying. However, you will notice that I constantly try to stay around the, this rock because this makes me be arty safe when the artillery is still around this quadrant. Again, I think the idea or the t the, um, the fact that we won was purely because I wasn't getting focused as much by artillery because they simply didn't have a shot on me. I did do a misplay later on and you will see it. And at this point I was even thinking to maybe use HE rounds. They have 680 alpha, but they are more risky to use on a standard B. I can penetrate his side, I can potentially one-shot him, but I decided to stay with the standard APs. You can see we already, uh, with the premium APs, because we already used the standard APs, which were 10 rounds in total. I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to take one shot for the team. In the end, I do have still the repair kit left, and I was able to put him down to be a one shot. There we go, you can see the artillery is still standing somewhere behind there, and now he was able to shoot at me. Very lucky that he wasn't able to do significant damage. And now I just decide, you know what, to again pull back. I do not want to fight him because I don't know where the M46 is camping. And look at that, there isn't Parachetto and that was so unlucky. Here I was like, no way, I just failed this game. He is shooting gold ammunition. He has easy shots into my side. I was hoping I could detrack him, but I wasn't able to. And yeah, that is the standard B. I immediately have to kill him because they both have very potent guns to kill me. Luckily enough, he whiffs his shot, and now I have to just push him. If he's detracking him, I am unlucky and he could kill me, but I was able to catch up to him because of the superior mobility of uh, the AMX M454. Like, at this point where I was hitting the gun of the 113, I was shaking. I was like, no, I may, I, oh my god, I just killed this game. I just, I just throw this game away. Because again, in such a game, I'm not going to count on my teammates being significant helpful. This sounds incredible e egoistic and this sounds incredible stupid, but in the end I ha I am the only person I can trust to not do mistakes. I'm the only one I can, you know, influence. Also, by the way, this was very obvious that the 268 was camping over there after we got spotted, hence I was immediately going into cover to not get shot up by him or try to bait him into a shot. Now you can see what is happening when you are not camping and artillery is like oh look at me 
here I did a very, very, you know, risky snapshot. Uh, luckily enough, I had the pew pew reactions to do it. And now I once again have to stay behind this rock cover to not get killed by the artillery piece. Luckily for us, the M46 Patton is a very nice chap. We are doing a little high roll to finish off the game with eight kills and almost 8,000 damage. We sadly enough didn't do any D tracks or excuse me, we didn't do any blind shots so we couldn't get this magical number. For some reason our Jack Panzer killed himself. He crashed for no reason at all. The RT could still win this game if they could penetrate the TV TVP. But they didn't. He didn't shot, he was still on reload, and the TVP finishes the game off with its one final shot. Like, I don't know what to say about this game. This game was, in my opinion, it wasn't really that skillful because we had to camp a lot. Again, this map is sadly enough very, 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 very camp heavy. And you could argue that it wasn't really an interesting gameplay. I did, I hope I was able, however, to explain the thought process behind what I was doing and why I was doing it and why, for example, I stayed back. Again, it's very, very hard to push in when you don't know where the different people are camping. Like, again, chances are that some TD may or may not be camping here. So my po a peak on the Tiger 2 was very, very risky. It could be that the Object 268 would be camping over there in the early stages of the game, meaning that me pushing around like this would be very, very bad. So yeah, I was a little bit confused why exactly the recording was lagging, but luckily enough, everything is all right. Everything is Gucci. So that is a kudos to me. Sorry again for that at the end. But yeah, this was what we got for the game. Obviously it was an ace tank with almost 8,000 damage dealt. We basically hit every single shot we did, which is great. And well, a Radley Walters medal, the Top Gun medal, Steel Wall even, even though we didn't bounce that much. Um, damage and the high caliber metal. We did do a lot of damage on, well, lower tiered opponents, most notably being the standard B, but we also did some on the 113, some on the 140 and some on the 268, which were our counterparts. Nevertheless, I think we did a fantastic job. Me and Excellence together, we carried this game with almost 11,000 damage together, which is very, very strong, I would say, when you compare it to the other people. I would say, again, 357 matchmaking is still not that fun for, well, lower-tiered opponents. Sure, the Prochetto did have his chance, but let's look at the Tiger 2. Sure, you could argue he was stupid for peeking, but then again, I'm doing 560 damage. I'm basically free-shotting him. I'm not even a TD. That is tough for him. Plus, he has a very hard time to penetrate me if he's not aiming properly for the weak spots. I'd say that this game right here didn't really show too much how bad 357 matchmaking was. It still did show what happens if a good player is in a tank which doesn't get focused. Partially maybe because I was using the anonymizer. I did use it because Silence was using it and I didn't want it to give away our position. Nevertheless, we did do a decent chunk of credits as well in plus. Issue is I did was shooting a lot of gold in the end because I was running out of normal rounds. To be precise, we did shoot eight gold rounds because we had 10 normal rounds in the game. But yeah, that is everything I'm having for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, let me know with a thumbs up. And if you think I should do more comment and gameplays, then let me know in the comment section below. Obviously, I will always try to do different things to make it interesting for you. And obviously, I would like that you can learn something from it. Again, I don't really like airfield. For heavies especially, it's a very campy type of game. You could see we, we weren't really allowed to do anything, you know. But yeah. I'm also experimenting a little bit more with different things I'm having. I recently, or rather today, got a huge new investment, which I think it just looks beautiful. I'm not the most beautiful person out there, but my God, I'm so happy that I am able, or I was able to get through the money I'm getting through YouTube, especially from my both channels, to buy two key lights from Elgato. Sure, they they have had a pretty steep price and was well, saving up for them for a decent time, but I am so happy with the result. I don't think that the green screen is having any issues anymore. It looks much, much better lit, 
when you are, especially now comparing it to the last time, you can see it's almost most of the time uniform and it just looks so much better and such so much cleaner. I'm so like when I was building them up today and saw the result, I was like, I was smiling and the smile basically came. If I wouldn't had ears, the smile would have gone around my head. Like it was so great. I was I was so happy. The coolest thing is I can actually also like, oh yeah, it's too dark. I don't want them anymore. Oh, I want to have a little bit of a warmer light. I, I can do this with just a press of a button. And that's just wonderful. Sorry for just being joy frocking right here. And this wasn't any anything anymore for the video, but it's just for you because you're the viewer, which well, uh, which <laughs> the most dedicated viewers, which are watching all my videos till the end. Thank you so, so much for your support. It's amazing to do videos for you. And just lately, it's just wonderful. Like the amount of comments I'm getting with me doing being underrated and doing great stuff is like, like that, that is amazing. That's such a great feeling. And thank you so, 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 so much. And I, again, try to do the best I've ever been to give you the content you deserve. Anyway, my name is Raging Raptor. If you enjoy my videos, then consider subscribing. If you think I can do something better, then let me know in the comment section below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, stay safe, stay healthy, and good luck on a battlefield. Cheers, guys.